Now at nine, how a group of bikers shifted their lives into a new gear and why they're giving back to the community. A study abroad fair was held today at the Student Center. Find out how these opportunities can lead students to grow in their studies. Plus, an unprecedented plan to save the government from a looming shutdown. We have the details. And the chance for millions of Americans to face flight delays over the Thanksgiving holiday. How you can prepare. I'm tracking a very warm work week and sunny skies as we head into the next seven days. Delaware County's only live television newscast from Ball State University's Unified Media Newsroom. You're watching NewsLink Indiana. Hello and welcome to NewsLink Indiana at 9. I'm Sophie Schick. And I'm Sawyer Osman. This past Saturday, Game Changers held one of their four Thanksgiving drive drop-offs. With Thanksgiving creeping around the corner and weather temperatures dropping, Game Changers held their second annual Thanksgiving food drive and spread the warmth coat drive. Founded in 2021, Game Changers is a riding club with over 30 members who are ex-felons and ex-addicts who want to give back to the Muncie community. With majority of their early members coming from the south side of Muncie in a low-income neighborhood, this drove them to create their nonprofit organization. Four days out of November, Game Changers accepts donations of turkeys and non-perishables to feed a minimum of 10 families in Muncie. Connecting with schools around the city, these riders collect jackets and coats for their Spread the Warmth coat drive in order to keep students warm. Kind of just decided instead of tearing up the town, we're going to start giving back to the town and that's kind of where the name Game Changers because we're trying to change the game instead of causing chaos in the game. Game Changers has two more drop-off dates left in November for clothes and food. For more information on how you can help, visit Game Changers RC on Facebook. So it's been, you know, we had a beautiful day. What a great start to the week, you know? Absolutely. But I honestly have been blown away by how windy it is. So it has been, right. Right. That being said, let's have our first look at the weather with Ian. Well, right now across the state, we're starting to cool down as we head into the rest of the evening and not as high winds as we have expected over the past couple of days. Looking at Muncie right now, 41 degrees, 47 in Indianapolis and 39 in Lafayette. And we've been warming up over the past 24 hours. Again, looking up at Muncie, minus four degrees as we've cooled down, uh, increase of two degrees in Indianapolis as well. And we're gonna continue to warm up as we head into the rest of the work week. Checking this out, above average temperatures this week with clear skies, sunny, shining, and a rainy end to the work week, which you can find out more about in my full forecast. Thank you, Ian. Do you want to earn college credit while living in a different country? Ball State students have the opportunity to travel around the world every school semester. The study abroad advisors set up a fair for all students to check out different countries to visit. The program offers many different places within many different majors and minors connected to those places. There are many different trips that vary in costs and scholarships. Many students go abroad for the first time and they really become themselves, you know, it's where you learn how to navigate uncertainty and learn how to solve your own problems and live in a new place and um, all of that can really develop you personally. But for more information on studying abroad, visit bsu.edu slash study abroad. Turning now to Capitol Hill, you're taking a live look at the Capitol building as House lawmakers are working against the clock to avoid a government shutdown. New House Speaker Mike Johnson unveiled his unconventional two-tiered funding plan over the weekend amid Friday night's funding deadline. CNN's Mike Valerio breaks down its chances of getting passed before the deadline. Well, with this latest episode of Government Shutdown Watch, there are some signs of bipartisanship emerging. But even if this deal passes, it is seen by many as likely only getting us back to this exact same spot in January and February. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson's plan to temporarily fund the government is already facing opposition from members of his own party. One thing we know almost to a certainty is that the, the GOP side of the aisle contains a number of people who are extremists and who have shown absolutely no indication that they want to get things done. The first part of the bill and a two-tier plan extends funding until January 19th for items including military construction, veterans affairs, transportation, housing, and the energy department. The second part extends funding until February 2nd for the rest of the government. We need, we need more time. 
so we could pass those and then have until February to negotiate with uh, the Senate to get this done. Missing from the plan, additional aid for Israel or Ukraine and the deep spending cuts hardline conservatives are looking for. With a slim majority in the House, Johnson will likely need Democratic support to get the bill passed. Johnson is going to do what's right, buy time, and then come together with the Dems and work in a bipartisan fashion, which is what the American people want. Some lawmakers are frustrated with the piecemeal approach. It just means we're postponing the agony. But with the clock ticking and several global crises ongoing, the pressure is on Congress to act. I mean, there's no choice here. I mean, the, the world is on fire from where I sit. Uh, it is too, uh, you know, urgent. Uh, we can't mm -hmm. sit back and do nothing. And also, of course, involved in this process, President Biden. He so far has not said whether he will sign or veto this deal if it gets to his desk. But he did say in the Oval Office today that he needs to see more about how Republicans are strategizing. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. A government shutdown here in the U.S. may have a big impact on the upcoming Thanksgiving travel season. One AAA forecast released today predicts this Thanksgiving will be the third busiest on record for travelers. It estimates over 55 million people will venture 50 miles or more from home. Plus, travelers could face more headaches than just congestion. The White House is warning airline passengers would face long wait times and delays. Ball State hosted Dr. Fabian Lopez and Dr. David Kovec for a guest recital with BSU faculty last night. This performance took place inside Han Recital Hall located in Sursa Hall. The musicians were in a chamber with BSU string professors Dr. F Peter Opel and Dr. Yu Feng Chen. Many pieces were played, including some from Joseph Hayden and Felix Mendelssohn. For aspiring musicians like Grace Buchanan, this recital was inspiring very professional and they're very good at what they do and it's very inspiring especially like I'm in a chamber group too so it's really cool to like see other musicians who are also doing that. This was the last performance in this series. Lots more to get to on Newslink Indiana. Coming up the Supreme Court is adopting a code of conduct, what it entails and why they're doing it. Plus, our own alum, David Letterman, is selling a piece of television history. Find out how you might be able to get your hands on one of his show's set pieces. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tight. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. If you love them enough to drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Throw that ball, Diane. Woo! You got this! What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you, get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back. New U.S. airstrikes were launched against Iran-backed targets in Syria after recent attacks against U.S. troops. The Israel-Hamas war has raised tensions all around the Middle East. 
This has led to Iran-backed forces to launch attacks against U.S. troops in the region. Over 56 soldiers have been wounded in 45 attacks in the past month. The U.S. has responded with strikes targeting training facilities and safe houses used by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. This is certainly a, a big concern to see these strikes and to see the number of American soldiers that have been hurt and now clearly with uh, those killed in, in action on the other side. President Biden's highly anticipated meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping is set for Wednesday in San Francisco. During the meeting in California, don't expect the two sides to come to an agreement on thorny issues such as Taiwan or human rights, but rather officials say this is an opportunity to set some barriers and limits to create some calm between the two nations. This meeting is a chance to prevent the relations between the U.S. and China from deteriorating with the goal of creating some stability. Today, the Supreme Court said in a statement signed by all nine justices that it is adopting a code of conduct. It's an attempt to improve public confidence in the high court after months of headlines alleging some justices appear to have potential ethics violations. The new code is based on an existing code of conduct for lower courts. According to the statement, it has been adapted to the, quote, unique institutional setting of the Supreme Court. The justices didn't make clear how the code would be enforced, and they acknowledged they had more work to do. Ever dream of owning a piece of television history? Well, legendary late night host David Letterman is offering regular folks a chance to own marquee sign from his talk show. This year marks the 30th anniversary and you can enter the sweepstakes by donating $10 or more to Habitat for Humanity, an organization Letterman has supported since Hurricane Katrina in 2005. And, you know, speaking of our late night talk show host, these late night temperatures, I mean, man, it's getting cold and dark real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> and I see what you did there, Sawyer. So let's take it to Ian for our look at a forecast. Well, right now we're going to see some very cool temperatures across Indiana. However, we're going to warm right back up into the midweek. So you're going to want to tune into my full forecast to hear more about that. Dear moms and dads, what you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. You know it's true. Mom, we love you always. Everything I do, I do when you graduate, you. they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what, I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? Mm -hmm. To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again, then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. In a society that we were brought up in, it's very hard on little black boys. You have to navigate feelings and emotions so the world don't get you. Sometimes when I cry, I won't know how I'm feeling or why I'm crying. I just grew up never feeling like it was okay to cry. Yeah. And so he really forced me to have to reconnect with the kid that didn't get to cry. That's beautiful. We don't cry. We don't take Right now across Indiana, we have started to cool down as we head into this evening. Looking at Muncie, 41 degrees, 47 in Indianapolis, 39 in Terre Haute. But we're not quite all the way down for our nightly low yet. We're going to continue to cool down as we head into the early morning. 38 degrees at 1 a.m., 34 at 4 a.m., 
33 at 7 a.m. So that's starting into most people's travel time. So if you're heading out early tomorrow morning, you're going to want to stay prepared for that. But that is very far away from our high from today. Looking at 64 degrees for today's high, far away from our average high of 53. Very warm for this time of year with our record temperature being 70 degrees set all the way back in 2010. So not very far away. However, again, we are going to be very cool as we head into tonight with our low for the day being 33 degrees with clear skies and northwest winds of six to eight miles per hour. And those clear skies are in part due to a high pressure system camping out over the Midwest in Indiana right now. That means more clear skies as we head into the coming days. Looking at 8 a.m. tomorrow, 33 degrees, 54 degrees at noon, 55 at 5 p.m. with south-southeast winds at 6 miles per hour. And again, we're going to continue to warm up into those next couple of days. And I'm also ready to start wor warming up a turkey as we head into Thanksgiving week, only 10 days away. However, before we get there, we're going to warm again, warm up those temperatures into the next couple of days before cooling down once again, heading into Thanksgiving week. Looking at Thursday, 66 degrees will be our high for the day, very far away from our average high for this time of year of 53 degrees, very, very warm. But we're going to cool right back down heading into Friday, 55 degrees. That's because of a cold front moving across the Midwest. And with that, it's going to bring showers across all of the Midwest and most of Indiana. Look at the next couple of days. Again, that high pressure system is going to move out of the Midwest and clouds will move in as it leaves. Here is our line of showers. Friday at 12 p.m. will arrive across all of Indiana. So if you're doing any kind of travel this weekend, you're going to want to be prepared for both the cold temperatures and the precipitation heading into the next couple of days. But our average high is quite above average for our 6 to 10 day outlook from November 19th to the 23rd. Out west, a bit cooler, but all of the Midwest, very, very warm right now. Looking at, again, our chance of precipitation on Friday, 60%, 40% on Monday, 65 degrees on Wednesday, cooling down to 53 degrees on Saturday. I'm going to enjoy these warm temperatures while they're still around. Exactly right. It's that time of the year where you don't really know if it's going to be warm or cold. We don't know what we're getting, so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ian. Thank and boy. let's go to Dylan with a look at our sports. One Ball State squad is almost ready to hit the postseason hardwood. How Ball State fared in the first year of a new MAC challenge. All this and more next in sports. You've done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes After retiring from the NFL, I've been able to spend a lot more time coaching my daughter's basketball teams. It's something I love to do. Through our games and our tournaments, we see all types of coaching, good and bad. And it begs the question, do we really know who's coaching our kids? Do they have the proper training and screening it would take for me to be comfortable with my daughters playing for that coach? Our Youth Basketball Association made the decision to use trusted coaches to screen and train all of our coaches. I'm a trusted coach. Are you? Touchdown! Oh, wow. Did you see that? Whoa, 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 we scored? Yeah, we scored. We're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Uh, okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! 
Welcome back to News Like Indiana. I'm Dylan Selke with sports. Northern Illinois comes into town this weekend as Ball State Women's Volleyball hosts their senior night. This match tops off Ball State's two-game stint with the Huskies with the cards up 1-0. Ball State sends a message early as they take set one by 11 points. But by the fifth set, the match is tied 2-2. It's a nail-biter down the stretch, but Ball State squeaks out a victory on senior night. The night wouldn't end there as Ball State celebrates their senior class. Seniors Zoe Conway, Kate Vinson, Haven Gates, Addie Halverson, Lauren Gilliland, and grad student Marie Plitt. Head coach Kelly Miller-Phillips reflects on her favorite part of coaching her seniors. I mean, this year it's just been, I think, their, their toughness to help us just remain on course. Like I said, there's only a handful of them that are even getting to play due to a ton of injuries. And I think them just staying the course having perspective, relaying that to the rest of the group. Ball State's last regular season game is at Toledo on Wednesday before the MAC tourney on November 19th. Men's basketball competes in their first MAC Sun Belt Conference Challenge this past Saturday. News again as Jake Dickman hits the baseline to find out more. Ball State men's basketball has their first test of the season in their inaugural MAC Sun Belt Challenge game a series between the teams that comprise the MAC and Sunbelt Conferences. Up first, the Old Dominion Monarchs, a squad that head coach Michael Lewis knew could cause problems. I, I did not want to get in a track meet with those guys. And then, <clears throat> you know, when they're very good in the open court. You know, they're, they, they're a hard downhill driving team. They got excellent team athleticism and speed. I did not want to get in a, in a fast-paced game with them. After a fast Cardinal start, the Monarchs come storming back, outscoring Ball State 26-18, to close up the half down just two points, something Lewis felt could happen. When they got in a rhythm in the, in the first half, uh, they were really getting, uh, really driving, attacking the basket, and we kind of got out of our, our help uh, situations, um, and I just wanted to kind of break their rhythm. Uh, we got a few stops. After entering the final minute tied, the Cardinals pull out a win in a 73-68 final. Coach Lewis makes sure to let his group know how proud he is. I'm proud of the effort and, and what we got. Um, and, and our confidence will only grow. Junior Jalen Anderson would finish with an astounding 29 points, 9 rebounds, and 2 assists, leading the Cardinals in all three categories for the matchup. Despite these numbers, Anderson believes that he can do even better. I can always grow whatever I have, 50 points. Like I can always get better. Uh, points don't really mean anything. It's all about the dub. Ball State will play another game in the Max Sunbelt Challenge in February, but that opponent is yet to be decided. Their next contest is tomorrow night against Oakland City at 7 p.m. in Worthen Arena. In Muncie, Jake Dickman, Newslink, Indiana. To flip it over to gymnastics, senior gymnast Victoria Henry reflects on all of her accomplishments over the past four years here at Ball State as she prepares for her last season. Henry enters the 2024 season with her vault, bars, and floors all at a career high 9.9. .9. The senior and the cards are coming off a 16-7 record last season as Mid-American Conference champs after competing in the NCAA Regionals for the first time since 1999. With all of her accolades racked up and still more in front of her, Henry feels she already, ha already left her mark here at Ball State. When it comes to statistics and stuff, breaking records, I definitely know I left that mark. But I also think I left, I definitely left a mark within the team and within the team culture as well. Yeah. Just kind of being there, I'm not, I'm not down for like any drama or nothing. You know, I just keep it real and I just do my work. Henry and the squad look forward to getting back on the mat early next year for the upcoming 2024 season. An Anderson University women's basketball team outing in St. Louis turned into anything but fun. The team was in town for a tournament, and during a stop at the Gateway Arch, their bus got broken into. Annie Crawl has the details. How often do you see basketball opponents wearing almost identical uniforms on the court? Well, when the visiting team has their jerseys stolen out of a van while taking a team picture at the Arch, that's exactly what you're going to see. St. Louis is a, is a fun time. Like, it's a great city to be a part of. It just sucks that uh, bad things happen. 17 women's basketball players from Anderson University in Indiana were in town for the two-day basketball tournament hosted at Webster University. 
At around 2 p.m. on Friday, Anderson took these team photos at the arch. They stopped for no more than 30 minutes. Yet, one of them had been broken into, and uh, a lot of our stuff was missing. A lot of game jerseys, backpacks uh, with laptops and iPads and iPods and all that kind of stuff were, was taken. The police report saying the driver door on one of the vans had been damaged during the break in between Gateway Arch Riverboats and the arch. Multiple electronics, driver's licenses, a social security card, and a number of basketball jerseys were stolen. Even their shoes were gone. So within a few hours, Webster University jumped into action, finding extra jerseys and kicks from their inventory to try and size the opposing players correctly. They play fast, they press, they shoot the three, they're well coached, um, they're young, uh, they're scrappy. So uh, I kind of feel like the way they play is kind of how they handle this situation. They were resilient, um, and so it kind of shows how they play on the court, how they dealt with this off the court as well. When it comes to how some collegiate athletes may feel about playing in St. Louis in the future. I would say just kind of balance that out. And, you know, we, we work with that all the time with recruits, particularly out of state, that this, this is a very safe campus and St. Louis is a great city. Webster beat Anderson with a final score of 101 to 62. You know, guys, with uh, gymnastics on the horizon, I've always thought I could be a fantastic gymnast. Unfortunately, I can't touch my toes. I'm about six inches off. Well, you know what, Dylan? And if this makes anybody feel any better, I can't do a cartwheel to save my life. What about you, Sophie? Well, I mean, I can't do a backflip, so we all don't get what we want. But, I mean, this just goes to show how impressive our gymnastics team is. That's so, right. thank you so much, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. If you're terrified of heights, you might want to keep your eyes closed for our next story. Find out why after this break. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spells. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot? Helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Regardless of where you are on your path to retirement, you can still take charge of your financial future today. Visit aceyourretirement.org and answer a few questions from Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. For free tips, resources, and advice customized for your situation to help you feel confident and prepared for retirement. Retirement looks different for everyone. Make sure you're prepared for your financial future at aceyourretirement.org. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Take a look at this. Three people were spotted rappelling down the side of a skyscraper in San Francisco today. The trio is part of an aerial or vertical performance troupe from Oakland. The group says they had permission from the city to be on the building, and police tweeted that this was a planned performance. It was reportedly related to the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit taking place in San Francisco this week, and authorities were monitoring the situation. Now, I know when I was a kid, after watching Spider-Man, I actually wanted to climb up the, bu the buildings myself, so I wish I was them. And that is really scary. I can't imagine. Watching it would be cool, but doing that, can't, can't imagine. I know. I, I wish I didn't have to settle for weather. <laughs> yeah, no, I would never do that. I'm scared of heights. It yeah. terrifies me. I used to watch stuff like that on like YouTube, and way too scary for me. Maybe no. in another life, also when you could touch your toes. <laughs> That is it tonight for NewsLink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 9, streaming live on the NewsLink Indiana Facebook page. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night and stay safe.